Hello, and welcome to another edition of Interviewing the Legends, brought to you by the Publicity Works Agency, devoted to promoting musicians and authors worldwide. Call us today at 941 877 one five five two to start your free publicity evaluation. Remember, we shine only when we make you shine. Please welcome the host of Interviewing the Legends, music journalist, author, and entrepreneur, Ray Shasho. Hello once again, everyone. I'm your host, Ray Shasha. Welcome to another edition of Interviewing the Legends on VBS Radio, brought to you by the Publicity Works Agency. Call us today at 941-877-1552 or email us at publicityworksagency.com. Remember, we shine only when we make you shine. And by the Rockstar Chronicles Series 1, my new book featuring over 45 intimate conversations with the greatest music legends the world will ever know. Available now at bookbaby.com and amazon.com. Joe Lewis Walker picked up the guitar as a child and by the time he was 16 was an in-demand musician on the local club scene, regularly backing touring blues artists rolling through town. As a 16-year-old, he was the house guitarist at San Francisco's famed musical playground, The Matrix, where he played with or opened shows for everyone from Lightning Hopkins to Jimi Hendrix to Thelonious Monk. In addition to his work at The Matrix, he was a regular at Bill Graham's famed Fillmore West. San Francisco's music scene was quickly becoming a melting pot of blues, jazz, and psychedelic rock, and Walker was right in the center of it. These ear-opening surroundings explain the ease with which Walker blends blues, rock, gospel, jazz, and country, making it seem as if the walls between the genres never existed in the first place. Blues legend Walker accompanied shared not only musical knowledge, but also their personal wisdom with the teenage up-and-comer. Fred McDowell, Ike Turner, Albert King, Freddie King, Robert Jr. Lockwood, Leighton Hopkins, and many others taught fed and chastised the youngster whose icon Willie Dixon told him to set his sights high. What's your style? You need your own sound, Dixon preached. Walker took the advice to heart and developed his own fiery, melodic, and always unpredictable guitar attack. Walker met legendary guitarist Michael Bloomfield in 1968, and the two became fast friends. Bloomfield introduced Walker to many of the day's Top rockers including Sly Stone, Carlos Santana, Steve Miller, Bob Weir of the Grateful Dead, Yarma Kokonen, who we just had on the show, and even jazz legend Wayne Shorter. Bloomfield helped push Walker's blues in a more rock-fueled direction, and he became the single biggest influence on the young Walker's sound. The two shared an apartment for years and remained close friends until Bloomfield's death in 1981. Walker has released 24 albums and toured the world virtually nonstop. He has garnered four Blues Music Awards and holds an international reputation as one of the Blues' most prolific and talented stars. He's also recorded as a guest with some of the Blues' world's best-known artists, including appearances on Grammy-winning records by B.B. King and James Cotton. His latest release is entitled Blues Coming On, joined by a host of talented friends and peers on this superb studio album. Features guest performances by fellow blues icons Kev Moe, Eric Gales, and Albert Lee, plus Detroit soul singer, friend of the show Mitch Ryder, uh, punk rock vocalist Charlie Harper, legendary session player Wadi Watchtel, and many others. The album explodes with the passionate playing and soulful melodies that have made Walker a favorite among true blues aficionados, including the Rolling Stones. It's available now at Amazon.com. Please welcome legendary blues guitarist, singer, songwriter, producer, Joe Lewis Walker to Interviewing the Legends. Hello, Joe. Hey, man. Thank you, man. W- was that about sum it up? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, you know, it, 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 I, 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 I'm, 
I'm used to, you know, things getting jumbled around a little bit. You know, so, <laughs> I, you know, it's like, I, 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 um, really, you know, just little things like, you know, I, I opened up for the Colonial Smoke and I got to talk to him, but it was, that was that, the character of all of us, which was called the Fillmore Web. Right. Um, I got to, you know, I got to, I met Jimmy in his group, Buddy Miles, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, but I, I was just part with Michael, you know, when Jimmy was there. And, 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 and Clyde Stone was in the same neighborhood I'm from. Oh, uh, really? You know, side neighborhood in San Francisco. So I didn't meet, I met Clyde maybe eight years before I'd even met Michael. You know, and in fact, I was there when Michael met Clyde. So, okay, hey, was better. Really? But, but it's all good because we were all, you know, I, I was the young guy. Always mm-hmm. pretty much the youngest guy in the room. You know, so it, it, it was just all good because, you know, but, but like with Wayne Shorter and Andy Hancock, that was much later when I became a, a member of the Thelonious Monk Institute when I moved to the East Coast. And, well, on the West Coast, I was doing out there too, and Mary T. Bowles, when I became a part of that, then I would do, well, uh, we do always do the National Day of Jazz, and I would do the blues guys. Sometimes it would be me, sometimes it would be Robert Craig, sometimes it would be Jeff Moore. So the big show was the one with BB and all of us together, Wayne, uh, Vino, and blah, 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 blah. So it, 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 it's all one big gumbo. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, one big gumbo. <laughs> did did your, uh, your parents name you after the famous uh, fighter Joe Lewis? Uh, actually, my name is Lewis Joseph Walker II. Okay. Um, what happened was my older sister, Lester Soul, when I was a kid, uh-huh. we lived in, we lived out in the country in Fresno and Madera, California. That was, we call Central Valley. Where all the, you know, we pick beans or what have you. And my sister used to have to watch me because I was always a precocious little boy. And what she did was that Joe Lewis was the number one African American icon. Right. At the time, my, my sister just flipped my name around. You know, Joe Lewis, my dad wasn't crazy about it. <laughs> but <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know, here, here's a little story about Joe Lewis. My mom worked for the, um, uh, Blue Cross, uh, in, in the Red Cross, I'm sorry, in New York when she was like a teenager or, or she was in her t- early twenties or something like that. And she was on the subway with my aunt and Joe Lewis was on the train with his uh, military uniform because he was in the service. And he, uh, gave his seat to my mom and, and my aunt. He stood up and, and gave them uh, he shall never forget that. Is you know, <laughs> it was a yeah, you got you, you got to travel far and wide to find a bad story about Joe. Exactly, Joe exactly. You know, he was just a class act. You know, yeah, he was he was a really good guy. Very, he was a he was a big favorite among among everybody, I guess. Yep, yep. I, I think it's cool how you started so young and met all these uh, incredible legends, and 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 you know, they learned from them. And you said so a couple of things funny. You were the guy that, they said, since you were so young, you're the guy that went out and, and got the uh, the coffee, uh, the barbecue, cigarettes, 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 cigarettes. You know, and, and I was the guy later on that would you know go out and get other things. You know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, especially when Muddy's band came to town. You know? <laughs> it's like, Joe, um, you know the two girls you were with last Oh my time. god. They want to come to the show? Oh man. Yeah, 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 I think they'd like to come to the show. I mean, but that was a different time. It was all a good fun. Well, you got some stories, man. Did, have, have you written a book? I'm sorry. Uh, have you written a book? You need to write a book. I'm thinking about it, you know, I mean, every time I get ready to do it, something really, really crazy happens in my life to say, you know what, uh, I was going to start writing a book when I was 50. Right. And um, I, I thought I'd seen a lot then, you know, and then I just happened. And, and I was going to write one at 60. And now, you know, it, it's, how did you write a book and not put the pandemic in it? So, <laughs> yeah. it's, you, know, you know, if I live through this year, <laughs> uh, I, I think, you, you know, and, and that's serious. I mean, you, you, you never know. You know, um, uh, I, I, I will definitely start putting something down, you know. Well, if you need any help, I'm a I'm an author. I've got a new book out, and I've, I've done several books. You know, if you need any help anyway, just give me a ring. <laughs> I, I 
I'm not I'm not too weak that's what you were talking about. Yep. You know, the, the Yankees and stuff. Yeah, I've got uh I, I interviewed Johnny Winter. He was telling he was telling me that uh Muddy water's like champagne. I was thinking, you know, you always think blues guys like whiskey, you know, and that kind of thing. But he said he liked champagne. <laughs> no, muddy, muddy was adamant. Uh, I'll never forget it when I spent my time with Muddy. Uh, he was adamant. And, and you, you know, it just shows you how old his guys were really, really smart. He just said, I remember he said, hard liquor make, makes you evil. <laughs> you know, he said, and he's right. He says, you know, if you if, if you're thinking something bad, uh-huh. hard liquor just makes you think worse. You know, and, and so he, 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 that's why he wrote that song, Champagne and Reaper. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> and, and I, I, I think that that was, you know, it really just shows what kind of guy he was that he could put the place on himself with something like that. Because I'll tell you, nine times out of ten guys. It's, it's really hard to put a brakes on yourself, you know, when you got people coming to you all the time, yeah. off you this, off you that, off you that, off you this. Right. You know, so I, I always respected Muddy Waters to that, that one in particular. Oh, I love Muddy Waters, you know, and, and, you know, there wouldn't be any music at all if it wasn't for the blues. I mean, to me, the blues started everything, you know, and, you know, we, we, we should have cherished the blues a lot more than we've had, especially in this country, because we... You know, we created it, you know, basically. Yeah, well, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, it, 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 our, our country, you know, right, right now, you know, it, 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 it's like a gumbo. It really <laughs> is. <laughs> it's know. like if, if you don't put one ingredient in it or a, a fine stew or right. a fine stick on the food, you think. Mm-hmm. Anything uh, uh, like that, where it, it, my favorite. Dolly Parton. Yeah. Coat of many colors. Uh-huh. Coat of many colors. And if you take one strand out of that coat of those many colors, it falls apart. Right, right. Well, you, with the blues, it's never, it's been the foundation of the coat of many colors, but it never really gets the serious view unless it's packaged in a way that America likes its heroes. Right, right. And America, America likes its heroes. It's mm-hmm. a reflection in a mirror. And so when you, when you get past all that, then you can think, you know, that it's going to be the way it is what it is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, and yeah. that's what I respect about guys like Muddy and BB and them. Right. They could not, they could not play the hand mm-hmm. that they wanted to be dealt. Right. They had to play the hand they would dealt. Yep. You know, and that's what makes to me, the whole situation of the blues, which is not a bunch of notes mm-hmm. coming off a guitar, it is not a million dollar tour bus, it is not five hundred thousand dollars seats in an Armani suit right. with an English accent. Right. The blues comes out of some serious, serious pain, mm-hmm. and you can you can play the notes. But once you have lived what those notes come out of, then you have a, a real it's a credibility that comes with the blues. Right. It, it blues, blues means credibility and authenticity. Sure. That's well, what it means exactly. in a nutshell. And yeah. you don't have to be uh, a different guy or the other, but what you do have to be, you have to be connected to what it is. That essence. Mm-hmm. In other words, I'm not going to start singing about a little red rooster that I, I ain't never seen. <laughs> now, I have seen a little red rooster, <laughs> but I'm not going to start singing it, you know, because uh, that's not who I am. I'm going to be singing about what happened to me right. in certain situations. And every blues guy that I knew, like Willie Dixon or whoever it was, B.B. King, Joe, don't try to be me. Mm-hmm. Don't try to sing. About, you know, you, you can do a, a homage to somebody. Right. But I'm not going to hang my hat on doing a tour of, uh, of three kings. I'm not going to do a tour with, playing the music of B.B., Freddie, and Albert. I'm not going to do it. Right. God bless somebody else if they can do it and make a trillion dollars doing it. Mm-hmm. To me, that's like wearing somebody else's shoes. I don't want to do that. Sure. I'm not going to make a career playing note for note like Albert King. I'm not going to do it. Yep. I knew Albert King. The first thing he says is, son, 
Jazz too, you know. Jazz, jazz was so important, right. you know, in, the, in our yeah. culture, and now it's almost non-existent. You know, I mean, you had to really find, you know, especially new artists today. It's it's hard to find any new jazz. It really is. Well, it's weird, you know. It's weird, you know, because every time I go overseas, and I've been going overseas for thirty, forty years, right? You know, and, and people would always say, "Well, why do you guys keep going overseas? Why do you keep it?" Because they 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 do treasure. Um, uh, culture. They do. You know, the culture that it comes out of. I agree you know, with you. They, they're not so, you know, they're not so blown over by the hype mm-hmm. sometimes, you know, and that's why you, you had all the English guys coming back over here doing blues, mm-hmm. you know, with their energy, with it, because it spoke to their heart and their soul. Exactly. You know, I mean, you know, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you didn't want to be a Frank Sinatra. No disrespect to Frank Sinatra. Right. You wanted to be Scotty Moore. Sure. You wanted, you wanted to be a, a muddy water. You didn't want to, that, that's not what reached them. Mm-hmm. Because that I think, you know, you, you can relate to what, you know, to, 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 to some of the stuff that money, well, all the stuff, money, bad, or wolf, whatever, what have you. So it, it is, you know, and you got another whole generation coming out now that, 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 that the roots, the blues is just so varied, which for me, that's cool. You know, it, it's so varied. I think it's a big thing. <coughs> Yeah, I was talking to Shirley. Shirley was on the other day. Shirley King. Yeah. She's cool. And, uh, she, you know, she, she did, you know, mention that, you know, BB made the blues fun. You know, he didn't make it dark and dreary and this and that. You know, he was on Sesame Street. You know, he was on di- different TV shows and he, you know, he made the blues fun and pe- where people can, you know, really, you know, understand it, you know, and, and Shirley's doing the same thing. She's like a comic. She's she's really funny. <laughs> so it's a different yeah. interpretation, you yeah. know. <laughs> well, you know, there, 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 like somehow said, you know. Uh huh. You, you know, there, there's to show you, how, you know, how the how the blues is. There, there's there's Robert Johnson. Yep. Okay, a lot of people. They just get Robert Johnson on the brain. And, oh, Robert Johnson! Yeah. Oh, Robert Johnson! Yeah. Robert Johnson! The devil's so so so. And then you have somehow. Yep. Somehow, that song's like death letter. She's <laughs> <laughs> got some the real stuff that was yeah. happening down south when he was down there. Right. Whereas Robbie, Robbie Johnson got my baby's red hat. Right. And, you know, and console, all these things <laughs> that people can say, well, we don't want to look at that real dark <laughs> shit that went on. Yeah. We want to look at this happy go lucky shit. And it's, and it's great. I, I like it. Yeah. But it just shows that the blues is not, not monolithic in one way. Right. You know, right. I mean, you listen to some of the wolf stuff, it's scary. <laughs> it is scary. Uh, you, you listen to somebody else doing the wolf stuff, yeah. and it's not, it's just all the, you know, the certain parts are taken out of it. But, it, you know, but it, 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 the blues is invented as a way, as a cathartic meaning. Right. Right. To have a voice. Exactly. Jazz was it morphed into a two million dollar tour buses, five million dollar <laughs> private planes, five hundred million dollar private planes. That's fine. That is great. That shows how successful something is that these guys who didn't have a pocket kissing in the hand to hold right. and told don't let the sun go down on you. Yep. What they invented. Too bad if they couldn't have shared in those <laughs>
was a big kid, so they didn't cut up with us, everybody. Mm -hmm. And that is directly correlated to guys like Muddy Waters, except in the Stones when they came over, mm -hmm. uh, and guys like B.B. King, except in people, guys like Muddy Waters, except in Johnny Winters. That's my son, guys. Muddy except in Bloomfield as a son. Bloomfield except in me as his little brother. Yeah, that's Bloomfield awesome. Except in young little kids like Tyler Morris yep. is my friend. That, that's the big connection. Yep. That, that is it. It's huge. But it didn't come out. It, it didn't come out of the, the scary stuff. It didn't come out. <laughs> <laughs> Right, sure. Mm -hmm. funny you know I, I know a, a reporter uh made up that story about robert johnson I, and i know his family what i understood is not happy about that they were never happy about that st story but I, I i actually asked johnny winter i said you ever make a deal with the devil johnny i think i scared him he said no 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 i'm a good christian man i'm a good christian <laughs> <laughs> he is. i mean johnny was one of the nicest people you ever meet in your life he, yeah Yes, I think I scared him. You you know if you make if you make a blues record now about what's going on twenty years from now, people are going to be scared to death. <laughs> well, you know it, it, it's like we we listen to blues records, you know, from when it, when it was topical political blues thirties forties, you know, and you, right. and you, and you listen to songs you are like matches matches and burning out of wolf Mac, or, mm -hmm. you know, and that or or Floyd Mac Texas, my friend Larry Davis wrote. Right. Floyd Mac about that you, you know there's so many great blues artists that never got the respect uh, and there was a lot of women you know Memphis, uh, Memphis Millie man I got I really got into her you know Memphis Millie Memphis Millie no Minnie yeah, yeah Memphis Minnie that's yeah. right she, she was I got turned on uh, let's see it was uh, Maria Maldar uh, did like a tribute to her on an album and, yeah and I really got into her she was she was a, Yep, that's and right. You, you Google her, man, and she just wearing the guitar hat. I, I look at her every other day on, on video, <laughs> you know, or, or go back to uh, Arthur the Hunter or, you know, any any of those, those little Big Mama Thornton. Yep. Great, great Incredible. Or, Incredible. You know, and, and there's a whole lot of sisters and young ladies now that's been singing the blues yep. and some of them coming up singing the blues that don't play guitar. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, that's a big change, isn't it? I mean, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it is. It is. I think it's wonderful. I do too. Yep. Well, I, I need to talk to you about the new album, uh, Blues Coming On. I gave it five stars, man. It's incredible. I love it. Oh, thank you. Thank and, you. and you got some great guests on there. Um, uh, Yorma's on there. We just had Yorma on the show recently, another nice guy, really good guy. Uh, let's see, my fa- favorite tracks. Um, I like, uh, let's see, well, Blues Coming. Is, is one of my favorites, featuring Eric uh, Gales and Dion. Dion's on that track also. Yeah, yeah. Waddy, Waddy's on that kind of cool guitar, too. Yeah. And uh, you also got uh, Carla Cook does a couple of tracks on the album, which yeah. uh, it's, it's, she's great. What a voice. Oh, what a man, I'll tell you. It, it, you know, if it's one person I got turned on, to uh, the A&R man from so, here, yeah, you gotta listen to her for, I mean, she could be strong with you, so I'm, I'm mm-hmm. just like, wow. And, uh, uh, so, you know, I got another song for you to, to be on and get it off really good. And, um, man, I'll have to, you, you know, I, I have really love you. I say this because I have the thing about me, but for the last thing, I, I don't know why Carla Cook is a powerful name. I agree. I mean, she, she's right up there with Matt and Cole, Rest Control, and mm-hmm. Chaka Khan, and any of those people. Sure. Uh, or, or, you know, she ain't up there with Edda, because Edda was, Edda was, you know, before her generation. But, I mean, she's just so talented. Uh, I mean, I, I, it's really weird, you know, because I have so many things that are, are the, the sons and daughters of very famous people. Right. You know, people that I know. And, and for all of them, it's, it's like, she you know, sure. For all of them, single. For all of them, it's a double-edged sword. You know what I mean? It really is. You know, I, and, and I think for Carla, it, it, it could be a double-edged sword to Sam Cooke's her father. You know, but uh, as far as an artist, by, by any means, she stands on her own two legs. And boy, whew, I, I mean, when I had to mix this record and edit it, there was nothing she did that I wanted to take out. I have to edit it. I gotta say something. You know, it's like a movie. You can't leave everything in. Right, you know, right you gotta edit it. But I was like really hard editing it anything is. with her because I understand. Wow. <laughs> you know, you, you know, it's weird. You said that there's so many legendary uh, artists out there that have kids that are incredible, but they they don't get a break. You know, they really don't get a break, and I don't understand it one bit. Uh, I, I think, I, I, you know, I, I don't, I can't figure it out, you know, and you can, you, you can go across genres with it. Yeah. You know, I mean, just, just thinking, Ricky Nelson's son. Right. They had a good record, but yep. they're good. Yeah. In California, they're good. Um, John Lennon's son, Julian Lennon. Julian, yeah. Um, the ones that sort of broke the mold a little bit, I think, is Ziggy Marley. Right. But then again, Bob had so many kids, you could have an orchestra. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it's That's like B.B. with 13 kids, or, or, or Solomon Burke with 12, Jimmy Wales with 19 kids. Yeah. You know, but, but I mean, I, 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 I listen to Jimmy and Lennon, I'm like, it's like with John Lennon, and uh-huh. I'm one of the biggest John Lennon fans in the world. And I listen to the other kids, Sean, and it's like, they don't like listening to Yoko Ono. Yeah, I know. And John went in a little bit, you know. Yep. But it sounds good. Yeah. It sounds good now, you know. But I, I really feel for the scions of, of, of people that have made a name to themselves. It's just extremely hard. Now, if you write, that's different. Because, like, the first track on this song, the lyrics, I, I got the, the, the words that got me going with Gabriel Jagger, Mick, Mick Spahn. Really? And Gabriel wrote, yeah, Gabriel wrote those. I didn't know that. The poems, and, and he sent me those because I, I've been knowing him, you know, through different ways anyway. And so when he, when he wrote, you know, uh, Feed the Poor, he wrote, you know, um, um, he sent me a poem, um, People Lying in the Gutter, No Father and No Mother. Mm-hmm. Everyone Walks Past. Because they're hypnotized by money's trance. Yeah, that's a good and line. I said, oh man, how can you like that? You know, and they start telling me, you know, and he sort of heard the BB King song, right. Don't Before. Yeah. So he wrote Free the Poor and he sent me all these lyrics and stuff. I was like, Gabe, I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm going to write something to this. And I think, who the perfect person to play guitar to this? And Yorma just popped in my mind. 
Yeah. But it took me about a year and a half to get, you know, when Yarma wasn't working. Right. And I wasn't working to get him to, to do it, but it worked out pretty good. Well, like like you always do on your albums, you know, you mix it up a little bit. You know, every song does not sound the same. It's it's all different. Uh, the stuff with Carla, you know, I, I'm a big R&B fan. I'm from D.C. and Baltimore originally, yeah. and, and I grew up with R&B. So when, when, when Carla sings, I listen, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, how can you not? You she's, know, she's incredible. Uh, it's got to be the right tune and the right platform. And you know what I like about her is that she doesn't overthink. Exactly. You know, yep. when you overthink it, all the melismas and, and melismas on every word and oh, 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 all the fake emotion, uh, mm-hmm. I just, you know, that's sort of, for me as a musician, I, I always just say, wow. You know, if you got a melody, just sing the melody, and then, you, you know, you have a part where you want to, um, you know, to add a little, little bit here and there, that, that's fine. But, you know, when, when you listen to somebody that can do all the melismas and all the vocal ones, like a like a Rita Franklin or somebody, yep. they didn't do it all the time, yeah. you know. Yeah. I mean, she she knew how to sing on that, she really did, you know. And, and that was to me, you learn stuff like that in church. Mm-hmm. You know, call the stuff like the church. Yep. Yep. You learn how you learn you learn your lane. If you sing it with a group, you learn which your range is and which you okay. You're the first, you're the second tenor, you're first tenor. You 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 know you bass, you 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 know you alto, you you know whatever. Uh, you know, you might have one person that can go all up and down the scale, mm-hmm. you know. So, but, but, um, you, you really learn that you don't have, the harder you press, the, 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 I don't know, the, the, the less control you have over what you're doing. <laughs> it's got to come out natural. It's got to come out natural. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's yeah. what I'm looking for. Exactly right. You know who my favorite R&B singer was for long, Sarita Wright. Did you know Sarita? Well, I know of her. Yeah, you know, oh man, read, you know, know. I mean, we all know her, right? Oh, uh, I loved her. She was, she's probably yeah, my yeah, favorite singer. She also wrote, um, the, the Billy Preston song with Billy Preston. Yep. You know, the Phil Gil Cocker thing that brought his career back. Exactly. Oh man, I'm just, well, I'm, 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 well, I'm they, they did, uh, um, they did Born Again together, hit her and, uh, and Billy. Remember Born Again? Yeah. Yeah. But the one that, the, the, the one that Gil Cocker did was a world Oh, uh, a beautiful, beautiful song, beautiful song. You are so beautiful to me. That one. You are so beautiful. Yeah, yeah. That she wrote that with with, with uh, Billy out there. Incredible. And she yeah. did. She yeah. did. Um, you know the Jeff Beck song. Um, uh, gosh, we ended up. We ended in lovers. We ended up in, we, 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 in lovers. At, yeah. Right. She did that before Jeff Beck. You know. Yeah, yeah she wrote some good stuff. Stuff with Stevie. Yep. And uh, she she was you know married to him, you know. That's right. Yep. That's a shame, man. I, I'm I'm so tired of people dying young. I hate that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I really it, do. It, it's one of those things where you know um, what you gonna do? You gotta play the hand you dealt. You know, not the one you want. Back to the songs here. Um, uh, one song that really kicked my ass. Was uh, let's see, it was um, the thing, the thing featuring Jesse Johnson from the time. The, the song yeah. it really changed directions, didn't it? Because it ended up sounding like a Hendrix psychedelic jam. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it really shocked the hell out of me. <laughs> I I can't help myself sometimes, you know. It's like I, I wrote that song in 1984. Uh huh. Oh, 
Oh, it's great. That was, oh, my goodness. When he did that, I, I got up and started dancing because I'm like, damn, I know what I liked him at the time. <laughs> All those little funky ass sort of James Brown. Oh, but it's the, it. But the ain't really James Brown, Jimmy Nolan stuff. That's just right. stuff. I'm like, hell yeah. Get this what a boy. song. And I got to have my girl on there who played with me for a few years. Uh -huh. Paul, yeah. And that's what he's doing. Good. She plays the saxophone on there. A saxophone. So, so I, I was fortunate, you know. The, you know, there was a there was a, another song called The Thang by, uh, was it Funk Inc.? Did you know that that version? of? It's a different song altogether. But they, they named it The Thang also. Really? It's it's a group, group group called Funk Inc. I think it's all uh, instrumental, if I remember. I can't remember. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's funny how sometimes, you know, there, there's a lot of um, names. Same thing when you write a book, you know, same title over and oh, over yeah. again. Yeah. yeah my, the, the book I have now is out. It's somebody else has the same title. It's a different, you know, mine are all interviews. He, he's actually got a story. So I, I don't feel bad. <laughs> yeah, well, so as long as you ain't taking somebody's uh, band's name, <laughs> that's <I> true. <laughs> that that happens too, man. That happens too. You know, stealing band names. There's sometimes you get the same name with five different bands. That that does happen. So you never know. A couple other tunes I liked: um, <laughs> "Bow Legged Woman," "Knock Need Man." <laughs> Oh man! Yeah. My man Bobby Rush, you know Bobby Rush that song. Yeah, playing a lot in the seventies. We played when it first came out, and I always loved that song. You know, I was like, oh man, I get a chance to play. Let's play the harmonica on there. Uh huh. Like, who would be a good person to play the guitar on there? And of course, the WWE and Maddie play the guitar. I'm like, oh, this is pretty cool, man. This is going to work out, you know. And it worked out pretty good. That Bruce Cat thing, he was. Well, I tell you, man, if I could give this six stars, I would. That's how good the album is. <laughs> well, thanks, man. I, I enjoyed it, you know. And, yeah. And, you know, I, I bounced off people I respect. I think it's Waddy Waddy. Waddy enjoyed it. Enjoyed it for the most part. Dion enjoyed it. You know, pretty part of it. And uh, I think, you know, different cats with. People like you know, I'm often tracked to you know, the people involved, to so Carla and different friends of mine. And, you know, I, I'm sort of, I, I like to see what people think of stuff, you know. And right. People said, you know, that, that they, you know, they were so good. I, mean, I, I like to, you know, my, one of my friends, I always, I always ask you, Joe, know, if you have fun, take a direction. And I think with you also, you have fun. I feel hard, I think you're probably going to work on it some more. And I had fun making this record. Yeah, it, it's a fun record. It's a feel-good record, you know. It really is, and you know, it's one it's one of those uh, albums you you know want to put on in your car and just keep driving. <laughs> <Yeah>. Lose yourself, <laughs> man. You've done so many great pro <clears throat> projects over the years. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. What one thing you said? Don't be afraid to add other cultures uh, into your sound. That is so true. You know, and, and, and oh, yeah, I mean, there's so much, much music, you know, in the world that you can add, and, and it, you know, it, it's just yeah. Well, you know, it, it's the one thing that that brings us together all the time. Yep. You know, it, 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 it's like a, it's like a remedy mm -hmm. for whatever whatever ails you. It, I mean, it, 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 even you know, if you if you go to a concert and, and you're sitting somewhere and you're grooving on the stage and See somebody else there doing it. And say, how you doing? And how you doing? You know, I went to the show and see you the same thing. Next thing you know, you, you got a friend there that you got in the sense of that. That's right. That's good music. That's right. And, and, and the optics of seeing everybody on stage, uh, uh, men, women, children, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's just, it's a great feeling. It really is. Yeah. And I think that that's what we all want to do. Yeah. You know, 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 Unfortunately, in war, mm -hmm. but the most popular thing is you see it in music. Right. You know, I mean, you see it in politics, but that's the divider. Mm -hmm. It's never to be united. You know, I, I think music is is something that we all sort of lean on. You know, and that's the thing that I think right now that 
really getting lost a little bit is that you know you, you can you can put a monetary um, value on somebody not being able to go to work at the factory or go to work um, at the plant or go to work driving the bus. You can't put a monetary value on art. You know it's very hard to do it. Uh, especially music and what it does for the psyche, what it does for the cathartic, what it does for um, bringing people together, what it does for all of that, you know, it's, I mean, you, you think about it, all through the history of music has been there mm -hmm. for any type of social change, That's you right. know, it, 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 you know, they got a famous American movie, The Grace of Wrath, mm -hmm. a lot of America, a lot of us have seen it, and the, that story is basically about Woody Guthrie. When, mm -hmm. when you get down to it, it's about Woody traveling with poor people. They call them Okies on the Saturday Moon, but they were just people that were down. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. And it showed how they had to really scuffle and fight for everything. And, 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 and the hero, Tom Joe, you know, and then you fast forward that 40 years to Bruce Springsteen letting out a record about John, Tom Joe. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and, and so, Music has always been there for any upheaval, and this is the first time that music is not being allowed to be there. Yeah, exactly. It's, You're 100% right. You're 100% right, you know? right, man. You, you know, we were so lucky to grow up in a great time of music. You know, in the 60s, uh, the 70s were good, you know, especially the 60s, because, you know, you, you put on Top 40, and you had anywhere from J James Brown Temptations to Frank Sinatra to you know I mean it was it was a mixture all on top forty it was, there was something there for everybody you know and right. somebody was saying that the the you know the the, the protesters today you know the the, uh, the the angry college white gut people that are destroying things they, they don't they're you know their music sucks and that and that's why they're so angry. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I... I can't say <laughs> that, I, I, you know, when you really, when you really, when you, depending on how deep you want to dive into it, <laughs> um, I can't say that the young people today, regardless of what kind of music they got, the reason that they're upset, for the most part, you got knuckleheads out there taking advantage of the situation. Oh, of course. But, yeah, of course. But when, you, when you think about it, think of it, when I was nice, when I was, in 1962, I was 12 years old. Mm -hmm. um, my, my dad was, was sent me back to Mississippi. He, he wouldn't go back. <laughs> but he sent me to see what I was doing. 1962, the biggest thing was when I went back there, nobody could vote that mm -hmm. I knew. Right. None of my relatives, none of their friends. Right. And so it, it sort of informed in me that when I was 14 in San Francisco, um, 15, I was marching at the federal building mm -hmm. to make things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I was marching. And so, you fast forward now, what have these kids been left? A planet gets screwed up. Yep. Um, 40, 44 million Americans out of work. Yeah, it's hard. Um, you, you have, uh, disease. <laughs> heading, heading towards 120,000 Americans dead, and no one said, boom to a group. Yeah. They haven't had one press conference that mentioned these people's names. Right. And so you get less that. Yeah. And the ticker. Yeah. You get twelve hundred dollars, you file for unemployment. So this generation now they have skin in the game. Mm -hmm. They don't have all the answers. Mm -hmm. But you got enough of here called test up, but I guarantee you, most of those young people out there, they are tired of the sexism, the racism, the classism, and people 50 and 45 and 60, 70 like me, just put on the Bob Dylan record that we used to listen to. <laughs> your, your time is rapidly aging. Yeah, I know. Get out of the way. Of the, so when someone's 50 years old sitting on their couch at home, that can't see any of those young people, mm -hmm. all I got to do is two things to tell them. Yeah. Those young people were me. Yeah. And those young people on your nieces and your nephews and your daughters, black, white, brown, right. green, and yellow, yep. get off their ass yep. and go out and complain about the, 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 um, the, the, uh, the, the ozone layer and, and complain like Greta has caught a ship all the way from Norway to read the United Nations to riot out. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. About and then while you're at it, and I leave it alone after this. <laughs> take, a, take a look at a picture. You can get them. Google, Google Space of the world four four and a half months ago. Mm-hmm. Look at the small and look at a picture of the world two months ago. Mm-hmm. And look at it less small. Right. Well, who? What were we leaving as young people? Mm-hmm. What, what were we leaving them? And we're all guilty of it. Yeah, that's now, true. We, we have an opportunity to change that. Yep. Simple as this. There's a gentleman who's walking through it. Take people who drive your license plate, have an even number, you can drive to work in a carpool mm-hmm. on a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. On a Tuesday and Thursday, you got to get transit, to grab a transit. Mm-hmm. When the transit will be made available. And when you have uneven numbers, you go on other days. That would cut the ozone layer in half. Right. Who on a 60-year-old butt or the 70-year-old butt or the 45 or 50-year-old butt wants to do that? Mm-hmm. I think you most of these young people would because they're going to inherit this familiar that we're leaving them. Right. So, I mean, when you look at it like that, throw the four knees out of the window. You're never going to be like the world in the city. I know. It's never going to be like that. They never but, have. you no, know, no. I think that what is trying to be accomplished is going to happen one way or another. If there's only two two things, it's a right or a wrong. Mm-hmm. Either we're going to do the right thing by nature, by trees, by the Amazon, by animals, by people, or we're going to do the wrong thing. Yeah. And we know where the wrong thing is going. So we have an opportunity to do the right thing. <clears throat> and it's not going to be easy. But we can do it. You know, we can do it. We've done it before. Mm-hmm. We can do it. We've done it before. You know what was so cool back in the 60s, 70s, you know, I mean, they they expressed anger and and change and everything through the music. And that and that 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 reached us. You know what I mean? We understood and we listened to it and it it helped us. You know, I mean, music, I I would have never made it without music. You know, there's no way, man. You know, I I, 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 go ahead. Yep. You know, it does. It really, you know, and I mean, you can take four sides of this thing, and I know that if I see him, you, you, I can say, John Lennon and Yoko Ono in a bedroom, who do you think of? Which song do you think of? Yep. Give Pete a chance. What's up? Thank you. Okay. Yep. I can say, no news. Yeah. Pick up. Do you think of Danny Ray? Did yep. you pick up nuclear disarmament? Right. Which with, with the movement made it happen. Mm-hmm. Now you have a, a government, our government, wanting to bring back nuclear weapons. Can you believe that? Yeah. Can, can you believe that? I don't know. It's government. <laughs> government's ridiculous. <laughs> Wait, man. Are you going to bring back nuclear weapons? <laughs> I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't even know what to say no more. I think, I think people are I, still I, getting sick from the, the early testing, you know? Yeah, well, mm-hmm. but you're right, the music was sort of like the town crier. It was a town you know? crier, yep. Yeah. It, was a, it was a pacifier, yeah. too, in a way, you know? It, it made you less less mad to go out there and destroy things, you know? I mean, I remember, I, you know, I my dad had a business in D.C. since early 60s, and I, I was there. I grew up on F Street in D.C., man. I, I saw all the hippies marching and, and the yippies, and I even saw Nazis and all kinds of stuff. You know, because they got a, a permit and they march. They march right through the streets and everything. But most of it was uh, peaceful, you know. I mean, I, I did get tear gas once at a, uh, it was a uh, Bob Hope, Billy Graham, uh, and Mark. We had a big show for 4th of July, and the Yippies caused trouble. And they tear gassed them, and it, it drifted. And you, you saw parents, kids, everybody <laughs> running away, man, from the tear gas. <laughs> I, mean, I, 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 I don't know, man. I, I guess it just depends on where you sit, you know. I just said recently that hippies and yippies were, 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 were came from it. And I just got to be honest, man. I've never seen hippies or yippies cause trouble unless they couldn't get, get something to eat once they got the monkey. But I, 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 did, I did see a lot of them. Um, you know, bikers and people beating people. Right, up. right. I, I've never seen, you know, but, but then again, I'm, I was on the West Coast. You guys on the left coast. You were on the, the right coast, I guess. You know, so I, I don't know, but I, I do know that one thing. 
You had we power, have, power. We all have different experiences. <laughs> yep. We, we, we come up from, you know. Yep. And so I, 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 I do believe that all these experiences inform the person that we are. But we also have, you know, that, that, that thing we were talking about music. Mm-hmm. Music is, a, is allowing me and you to have this conversation. That's right. That's right. Although we came up totally different, we seen different things in different ways. I mean, so, you know, I, 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 I but to, 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 to me to say that the music stops people from being angry and, and it's tricky. The music raises people's awareness. I mm-hmm. think, and, you know, people are, people are going to do what they're going to do when they feel like there's no way for them to express themselves. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, I mean, there's always a yin and a yang, you know. Yeah. And I, I think we all know that if you want to really move forward, you can't do it killing people. Mm-hmm. You can't do it hurting people. Right. You know, that's not a way to move forward. That's just the way, that just, that just means that you, you know, you, you try to scare people, you right. know, and hurt people. I think that we can all move forward if we want to. There would be more peace if more people listen to Joe Lewis Walker. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I, I, I hope, you know, I, I, I'll be 71 years old this year, and, you know, I, I, I do believe that more people want the same thing than don't want the same right, thing. Right, right. I agree. You know? I agree. You know, I really do believe that, and, and I, I believe if the people left with their brothers, if they can get together and expand that towards each other, it takes the fear mm-hmm. out of shit. Yeah. When you got fear, when fear, when fear is, 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 is the number one thing that motivates somebody, when you're scared of something, you start thinking irrational. Mm-hmm. You know, people say, oh man, I'm, I'm scared of that, uh, of the, the, that, that, that dog, or I'm scared of this. Well, dogs can tell when you're scared of. Mm-hmm. So right. they, they might go out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's just, I think when you take the fear out, I think we all want the same thing to a big degree. Right. I, I admire you for going back. You went to uh, San Francisco State University. You got your degrees, uh, music and English, and you did a you perform with the Spiritual uh, Corinthians uh, Gospel Quartet. Yep. I, ne- yep. Maybe I'm going to tell you what one concert I went to. I had front row seats for the Stones, and the uh, opening act was the Mighty Clouds of Joy. And I'm going to tell you, Mighty Clouds of Joy blew away the Stones. <laughs> <laughs> that is the truth. Well, yeah, but then, then again, <laughs> if, it wasn't, if it wasn't the high cool that they are to bring the clouds out there to, I guarantee you, an audience that probably 80% never heard of the mighty clouds. Well, well it's true. The show, yeah. The show how fucking cool those guys are. You know, because they didn't have to do that. But they were so and genuine, they, you know? They were so they, genuine. Did, did you know that? Did, did you know the Mighty Clouds of Joy? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, I've been on programs with, mm-hmm. with, with, with the clouds. Yeah. Yep. yep. When, I, when I was doing gospel, uh, the clouds, the soul stillers, the cheap pets, the mm-hmm. gospel peasants, the Grant Fallon, um, um, the Clark sisters. Yep, yep, yep. And, yeah. We, we all get programs together. Gos- yeah. Gospel's great, man. It is. It's, uh. Yeah. 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 And you, you better believe it. You, one thing you don't want to do is, 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 is go on after a good, a good, you know, roof raise and gospel group. No but way. They're, they're, they're singing for a different reason. Yeah. You know, but it, it shows that to me, you know, how cool the, the key to them was, making them to bring the clouds mm-hmm. on there because, you know, I mean, just think about it. You know, who, who wants to, uh, you know, have that type of competition? It wasn't a competition. I guarantee you they brought them on there because they like them. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> so, so, so them like them, <laughs> and they want to bring them out there to try to get a bigger audience for them. And, you know, I, I can <laughs> only go back to what Muddy and said, you know, Muddy and Beatty said it. If it wasn't for my English boy, the man wouldn't even know what the blues was. That's true. You know, That's true. It's not the rock and roll neither. Yeah. Uh, if it wasn't for the Beatles playing. You know, you, you know what's weird about the Beatles? What's that? You listen to them doing Roll Over Beethoven. Uh huh. Uh, different things like that. They did a lot of Shakespeare songs. Oh, yeah. You ever hear them doing, you ever hear them doing the other stuff you're saying? 
Uh, I don't think so. There you go. <laughs> I don't think so, no. There you go, right there. There you go. <laughs> That'll tell you right there. Well, they're not the king of, of rock and roll. Uh, I think... Did you ever hear him do a little Ricky song? Little Richard, yeah, of course. Gotta tell you right there. Long Tall they Sally. Was the architect of rock and roll. Yep, don't <laughs> they were the... I agree. <laughs> they, they, didn't, they didn't have it twisted. <laughs> they, had it, they had it straight out there. You know, if, so it was, if it wasn't for those guys, there would be no Beatles. You know what I mean? And R&B. You know, they did a lot of R&B stuff, too. Yeah, and, uh, and, and when they did it, you, you, you see what they did. Mm-hmm. Smokey Robinson, mm-hmm. you'll get the things like this. That's right. But they did do Rockabilly. They did Buddy Holly. Yep. You know, because Buddy was cool, but Buddy Holly's best friend was Will Richard. A lot of people don't know that. But that was Buddy's best friend. Yeah. Will Richard. So you, you have to, you, you know, you have to that. But, you know, that just shows the music is a big tent, man. Mm-hmm. And once you get everybody together, that's what you get, you know. But, I um, mean, you know, I'm, I'm really glad you brought that thing about the crowd. You know, it, 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 because that just goes to show that when it came to the music mm-hmm. and the big kids, that they want the stone here to replay that, that debt, mm-hmm. you know, that they felt that they owe right. to African American music. Yeah. You know, I've, I, I, I've been knowing the Rolling Stones for 10 years. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I've been in this house. I know these, I know them, and that's the way that they are. You know, and, and, and I tip my hat to them all the time. Because they really put their money where their mouth was. Right, right. You know, I mean, they, they, they so many justice in that, in that arena. They never got in competition with the hero. Mm-hmm. Whereas a lot of Americans, they said got in competition, you know, I mean, whenever Lou Richard would let him rip it out back to the cover it, you know, just to make sure they didn't get thrown uh, uh, Pat Domino would make, would make a record Pat Boone and Ricky Nelson would cover it. Mm-hmm. And then they, they put, you know, the, the, the English guys came over and, and they sort of flipped that man around. They bit, did. You know? They did. And, and that, that really, that, I, I'm telling you, I knew what it was. I knew that he came. That meant a lot to them. Mm-hmm. You know, because they were catching the hell here. Yeah. You know, Bruce is, 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 is all this and that now, but I, I guarantee you, <laughs> when I was in 62, 19, 62, 63, it wasn't very popular mm-hmm. amongst so many people like it is now. You know, and, and, and that, I'm not talking about white people, I'm talking about black people. Right. When I grew up, right. you know, I mean, I, I was a freak of nature playing Bruce <laughs> 13 and 14. <laughs> I, I, I really was. You know, because I, I, most of my friends were trying to play the latest song by, you know, the Temptations or the right. Supremes or Paul Revere and the Raiders or something. <laughs> and I like all that stuff. I love it all. Yeah. But, you know, when it came to playing the blues, for some reason, you know, the blues sort of, uh, it hit me the same way it hit, you know, someone like Albert Lee when right. he put a third in the name. Yeah. You know? You're talking about getting cigarettes for people. I, I did that for Alvin Lee. I was backstage with Alvin, and, uh, he, he had a hell of a concert. It was him and Eric Burden at a small club, man. And uh, Angie Dunbar was there, and a couple of guys from, uh, I think, Boz Burrell was there. And uh, I I brought my guitar, and Alvin signed my guitar and played it. He didn't play it on stage. He played it backstage, and I I went and got him cigarettes. (laughs) So I was up up Alvin or Alvin? Alvin Lee, 10 years after Alvin Lee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't know him, but but he's a hell of an artist, man. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, he was fast. He was fast. <laughs> yeah, I love this man. Yeah, you know, I was lucky to cover. I covered John Mayall's 80th birthday here in Sarasota, man, and I hung out with John Mayall. <clears throat> and you know, he was he was there uh, setting up his own equipment, selling his own CDs. I mean, you know, to see a legend like that, you know. It, uh, you know, I don't think he got his 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 uh, a do, you know, like he should well, have. Yeah, got it. Yeah, well, I got it. But, but, you know, I mean, just think about it. Everybody that played on those early records with John, you know, that was the similar record of their career, right? You know, so you listen to the Bingo album. That's the criminal record of all those guys of not just the hip hop player. But, you know, of Mick Fleetwood, of, you know, yeah, exactly. uh, the bass, I mean, that's just criminal record, 
too. Yeah. They let the team clean the green. Yeah. That's the civil record for him, you know, with, with, uh, with, uh, um, uh, uh, supernatural, mm-hmm. you know, and, and the stumble. You know, I mean, you, you really think about it, you know, what I got there is just the whole amount why. Yeah. You know, when it comes to not just English moves, but when he moved to California, you know, he had like sugar cane eggs and, and he had Sidney Robinson for a while on guitar. He had a couple of guys that know. Um, so I, I mean, John knows, but the one thing John knows, he knows guitar players. Mm-hmm. So he knows guitar players, man. He's still got a good voice, too. He, he still sings good. He really does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you know, and, and John just a, he has a special guy. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, that is it. You know, entourage, you know, none of that crap. John sells his own CD. Mm-hmm. You know, he put his own little gear up. I mean, he just, you know, he, 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 he's good man. <laughs> You know, the artist that opened up for him was decent, too. You know Larry McRae? Have you heard of him? No, I know Larry very well. Do you? He was, he, oh, man, he, he's he's an excellent guitar player. He really is. Yeah, he became an on good singer, too, and his brother. He's yep. a good drummer. Yep. You know, nice I mean, guy, too. He has a family of musicians that is excellent. Yep. You know. Well, I know we're going to wrap this up soon. I just want to uh, talk to you about Jimmy. Jimmy Hendrix. <laughs> What what is your uh, you know I, I talked to a lot of people that knew Jimmy um, uh, Lee Oscar was there at the uh, jazz club in 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 England for the, the the night before he passed away he was there with Eric Burden they were the war got up on stage and played with Jimi Hendrix he had some good stories but you're you're absolutely right though he uh, uh, I don't know he didn't seem like to be a happy guy you know what I mean he, he is I think the business was bothering him. He didn't get to do yeah. what he wanted to do, you know, and and it show. I think it showed, you know. Yeah, I I, I think you're very um, protective person. Yep. You know, um, because um, I met you in the because I was living with Bloomfield, and Bloomfield mm-hmm. had just, but Michael had just quit the Carl Butterfield Bloomfield band, Bob Carl Butterfield Blues band, and he he said, you know, um. He told us the guys who were living at the house, because I'm bringing out some guys, man, um, that they don't know a lot of people out here. And he said, Joe, I got this drummer, and I want you and Johnny Kramer to take him to the, the Bridge Theater in South Rio for the practice you got. And I was buddy Miles. Mm-hmm. I think I was about 17 and a half, 18, that he was a uh, year, about a year and a half older than me, I think. And buddy always would talk about this guy, Jimmy English, you know, talk about it. And so, um, one thing led to another. And when he came to the time, buddy, he was party for him at his house in Mill Valley. And so, and he needed a place for his, but buddy said, can we use your place for your show? And I said, sure. I had a little spot. They had a place called the Hell of Force, which is tons of chaplain used to rehearse there. And they, we all used to rehearse there. Right. And, and so, I let Jimmy use that spot, but I went to the party, and, and uh, I, I came a couple of times, and uh, he was just really thoughtful, and mm-hmm. uh, just a guy never talked about the way for you know, I mean, never seen anybody, you know, really nice cat. And, and I'll tell you, I mean, you, 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 you hit it on it from the nail. That, that's the whole thing. Um, you know, to me, the best record Jimmy Hurt, Jimmy Hurt has made that we got to hear was called Band of Gypsy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's the two reasons that he got to play with the people that he wanted to play right. with at that particular time. Right. And Buddy Miles gave him a pocket the plan, gave him a groove, and took some of the singing way off of him, and it just shows, you know, and everybody knows the famous story about before that show, Bill Graham went to Jimmy and said, you know, you, you know, you sort of a catch of yourself, you jump around, you mm-hmm. try to get caught with yourself. That's why I just say, when you see the film, the video mm-hmm. of Jimmy, he stands in one place. The whole show. Yeah. He doesn't play behind his back. He doesn't do, he doesn't do anything. And the story goes at the end of the show, Bill Graham comes over and says, hey man, forgive me, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> well, obviously you don't, <laughs> you know. But yeah. with Jimmy, I, I think you're right, you know. And, and I'm happy. Time has been gone. We have to come to be pretty good friends with Jimmy, but with Jimmy Cox, you know, we're probably going to do some recording here. Mm-hmm. We were supposed to do some things for this record, but it didn't work out. Yeah. But, um, and, and, and Billy, Billy doesn't talk a lot about that, but, you know, I, I knew Buddy very well, Miles, and, and some of the guys, and, and, you know, the, the 
knew when I was working, um, that was going to be his last gig. Mm-hmm. So I was like, his last gig with the so-called experience because the bass player had already quit. And it was just, you know, just, you know, it's kind of a knowledge the bass player sort of didn't get along with Jimmy that much. And there was some words said that were pretty, Rick T. Harsh. And the situation was, you know, where Jimmy was so frustrated where he had destroyed a hotel room, I think it was, in Sweden. You know, so a lot mm-hmm. of his partners really wanted him to just come home to America. Right, right. You know, come, come on, come on back home, bro. You know, just to be quite honest. Yeah. Come on back home. You don't, you don't have to be to the niggas to start Ronda. Right. You just want, you just remember that. Yeah. You know, we got you back, so to speak, and he never got a chance to do that. And unfortunately, um, <laughs> you know, that, that's the legacy that we'll never know because, um, you can see it at that Isle of Wight concert mm-hmm. where him and he just screaming at the drummer. Yeah. You know, you know, just screaming. You can Google it right now. Mm. You know, he's just, he's just, he's just so unhappy, you know, with what he started off to do and yep. what happened. And I just believe what it is. I mean, uh, there's other people that can talk about it way better than me, Billy Cox, you know, one of them, but I'm really not going to talk about it. Right. But, um, I, 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 the word was among us that Jimmy went to Ava with 2,000 in his pocket. You know how much was in the bank when they went to, to Wrap up his accounts in the bank. You know? I'm afraid and to ask. I'm afraid to ask. <laughs> Two pounds fifty. Really? So he takes a, a half a million dollars, but when, by the time he go to the bank, <laughs> he's got two pounds fifty. Oh my! That ought to tell you everything you need to know. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> it just <doesn't> tell you. <laughs> I, I don't think Chad Chandler was a good match for him. What do you think? I I I think you know the timing of everything. And I think the timing, the timing that, that, you know, if there's anybody, the timing that Jimmy went to England. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, it was the perfect timing because people who helped him in his career who helped him because they liked him as a musician. Mm-hmm. The Paul McCartney getting him on the Monterey Pop Festival. Right. You know, you know, they said, well, did the people in Paul saying, no, take Jimmy Hendrix. You know, well, how are you going to not? Take somebody when the Beatles is there taking. Mm-hmm. Okay, <laughs> exactly. Just like you say, the mighty clouds of joy. Eighty percent of your audience is for they told you. How did you know who the hell the mighty clouds was? <laughs> but when they got through, you did, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. So when he just came home to America, nobody knows who he was that much. Mm-hmm. But when he got through, there you go. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, it, it's sort of like. And, you know, just think, you, you know, you're a guy like that. You, you go to England, you, you get to meet people that you've only seen the records of, and, and some of them are cool, some of them are looking for towards you. But the biggest group in the world, one of the guys here is about to come see you and says, hey, man, that guy needs to give him a shot. Mm-hmm. Give him a break, man. Yep. And you make the most of that break. And then you, you go on a year or two years, you're the number one paid artist in the world. And then you've got guys in the group that, I love this one. <laughs> God comes to Austin to put a Jimmy Hendrix fan and thinks he's going to be the guitar player. <laughs> How in the hell is what alternative universe are you living in? So you pissed off the whole time you're in the band because you ain't the guitar player. That is, man. Uh, well, okay, all right. You know, I guess. I, I, I don't, I'm, let me say in England, I'm gobsmacked. Ima- you know? Imagine going to that, it. imagine going to that concert with Jimmy with the monkeys. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, I, got some, I got some great pictures of Jimmy, man. You know, I got some really? great pictures of nobody else. <laughs> yeah, save that, save those for the book, man. <laughs> yeah, I got one of a girl at that show jumping up and whispering in Jimmy's ear. Uh-huh. What if you ask him? She said, can you play some songs we know? Oh, no. Jeez. <laughs> you got to be kidding can me. You play some songs? Can you play some oh, songs my like, God. you know, like Stepping Stone by the Monkey? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> they just tell you what kind of... Jeez. back to me. Come back to me, Jimmy Wood, for our generation. Mm. So he didn't get pissed. Yeah. He never got pissed off. He put all of the 
was the most impressive music, you know. Yeah. And boy, I tell you, it was a lot of emotion. There's a lot, lot going on there. He was just a cool, he was a cool dude all, all along. You know, he was just, yeah, he was, yeah, just all the way around, man. Yeah. You know, you just can't say enough about him. I always like to say he was everything that was right. Right. Uh, exactly. Know, my generation, the hippie yep. generation, yep. and just the, 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 um, the, uh, 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 in case of this, you know, you, you were talking about when we, when we were coming up, uh, you know, when we were coming up, he was no record. And every record would be different. Yeah. But not only that, you know, they were finding out how to wait to work in a city. I always said that outside of John Lennon and the Beatles, Jimi Hendrix knew how to use the studio mm-hmm. as another instrument. Oh, yeah. You know? Definitely. Back with guitar solos, yeah. all kinds of things that you, you know, panning from left to right, mm-hmm. just the drum break and action mm-hmm. goes as well. You're <laughs> going from left to right. You know, I mean, all that stuff is just all brand new and it. You were supposed to be on a trip. Yeah. So it really, it was such a great trip, man, because we were all, it was, it was a good to make time. You, you didn't have to take acid with Jimi Hendrix. It was natural. <laughs> you didn't have to with the Beatles either. Yeah, that's true. You know, uh, that's I true. Mean, it's just, it's, it's, um, <laughs> you didn't get any gas. You didn't get any gas. Then you think you, you're there for one minute, and you start going, you the walrus, you're going to be a million things in between, but you got fucked. Come on, kind of just flying off. You got Eskimo. Uh, 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 uh. You got Chick. You got Mo. <laughs> Can you imagine George Martin? <laughs> the studio. Yeah. He said, well, John, John what, you want a backwards guitar solo? Yeah. Right. And, 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 you know, it's just like, oh, shit. I love the guy. I don't even know that. He got a video of Wingo talking about being in the studio. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and George, George Martin with his classical training, you know, going, what? <laughs> Final question for you, but I just want to mention I'm I'm friends with uh, Bobby Walmack's nephew, uh, Vicky Walmack is his name. He, he's got a bunch of albums out. He's a guitar player and he, he plays a mean electric guitar. And he he's kind of like you. He does R and B. He does some soul. He does a, a rock. You know a little bit of everything. Uh, if you ever want to, you know, talk to him or whatever, let me know and I'll I'll hook you guys up. He, he's a pretty cool guy. Where's he at? Yeah. Uh, I don't know where Vicky's at. I forgot. I forgot where he's at. But he always sends me his new stuff, and and he's on YouTube. Uh, he's got some great stories about you know people coming to his house too. You know when when he was young and everything. But he he's a good yeah. guitar player. Good guitar player. Yeah, who, who, who is his father? Is his his nephew? Uh, I'm not sure who whose dad is, but all I know is uh, his uncle's Bobby Bobby Walmack. But uh, oh. yeah, he and he's another guy. He's not getting any recognition, you know. And, and he's, you know, I, I just like I'm like you. I like to help these guys out, you know, as much as yeah, I can. Yeah, yeah, I feel you, man. Well, I'm going to um, Vicky, 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 because he, he, because he had a binky when he was little, you know, for a long time. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Binky? Yeah, binky, B I N K Y. Okay, I'm gonna look him. I'm gonna look him up. Okay. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Look, look him up, you. and it, if you want any interest, I could give you his email, and you know, he's a Facebook friend, a nice guy, really good guy. Okay, I'm gonna 
look for me on Facebook. Too. Okay. I'm thank you for telling me because I'm always, I'm like, you know, I'm trying to work with newer people. And, and, right. You know, I knew Bobby a little bit. Yep. You know, uh, so uh, that, that's really cool, man. Thank you. Yeah, I like I like Bobby Womack, too. He, he was a great artist as well. Oh, hell yeah. Yes, sir. All right, Joe, here's your final question. Here's a question I ask everybody, and I get some really interesting answers. Uh, if you had a Field of Dreams wish, like the movie, to perform, collaborate with anyone from the past or present, who would that be? Probably uh, Elmore James. Elmore James, that's, yeah, that's a good answer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just, 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 provide the, just, just the voice from hell. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, he was he was incredible. Have you ever heard Eric Eric Burden's song No More Elmore? Have you ever heard that? No. Yeah. No no, no more no more Elmore James. It's a really good song. Eric Burden. Yeah. Joe, Joe, man, it's been a pleasure talking with you. Thank you for giving me so much time. I appreciate it. Uh, the album is incredible. Five stars, six if I could do it, if they let me do it. <laughs> I, I, hope to, I hope to see you in concert, man, as soon as, soon as all this crap is gone, you know? Yeah, yeah, as soon as, soon as, as, soon as they rack them back and... And let us have a little bit of fun. Um, but I'm gonna keep your number here. I'm okay. Gonna, because uh, I might write this book, and uh, you know I've been offered a couple of people. Sure. You know, and blah blah blah. But um, I'm just gonna keep your number so um, I'll, I'll you know just, uh, keep that B in my body, so to speak. Well, if you send John John Lappin, if you send him uh, your address, I'll send you my book for you know I'll just send it to you. Cool. Uh, okay. Yeah. It's it's a great book. You'll like it. It's got everybody in there. Uh, the hardcover looks like the Holy Bible of rock and roll. It, lo it looks really cool. <laughs> All right, well, great, man. I will I will definitely um definitely do that. Okay, man. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, man. And uh, you know, when this is all over, try to come to Florida if you can. <laughs> oh yeah, I'll be there. All right, sure. that'll be awesome. Okay, All right, God, God God bless you, brother. Take care, man. <laughs> You too. Same to you. Thank you. All right, Joe. Take care. Bye. Purchase the new album by Joe Lewis Walker entitled Blues Coming On. Soulful Blues uh, Phenomenon and Blues Hall of Famer inductee Joe Lewis Walker is joined by a host of talented friends and peers on the superb studio album. It features guest performances by fellow blues icons Kev Moe, Eric Gales, Albert Lee, plus Detroit soul singer Mitch uh, Ryder, harmonica virtuoso Lee Oscar, hot tuna Jorma Kokonen, punk rock vocalist Charlie Harper, uh, legendary session play player Wadi Wachtel, and many others. This album explodes with the passionate playing and soulful melodies that have made Walker a favorite among true blues aficionados, including the Rolling Stones. It's available now at Amazon.com. For more information about Joe Lewis Walker, Visit his website at www.joelewiswalker.com. He's also on Facebook, www.facebook.com backslash Joe Lewis Walker. Very special thanks to John Lappin Enterprises for arranging this interview with Joe Lewis Walker. And, of course, the dynamic duo of Doug and Don Newsom of BBS Radio for making the magic happen for each and every broadcast of Interviewing the Legends. If you have comments or suggestions for the show... Contact me at interviewingthelegends at gmail.com. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Interviewing the Legends with Ray Shasho for the very latest interviews. It's real news, people. And, of course, my new book is finally out, entitled The Rockstar Chronicles Series 1. Chron Chronicles Truths, Confessions, and Wisdom from the Music Legends that set us all free. Order yours today on hardcover or ebook at bookbaby.com, featuring over 45 intimate conversations with some of the greatest rock legends the world will ever know. God bless you all. Have a great week. Stay safe and healthy. Bye-bye now. Thank you, everybody, for listening to Interviewing the Legends. Brought to you by the Publicity Works Agency. Call... 
941-877-1552 or visit us at publicityworksagency.com specializing in author and music artist publicity plans. We shine when we make you shine. Tune in to Interviewing the Legends every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Pacific Time on BBS Radio, Station 1.